Okay, so I started uh, the recording. So yep. if you want to start it. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, um, today is July 12. This is the July meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. We have a quorum. Um, present, we have Saren Darren. Say here. You, right, you want to announce that you're here. Saren, yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Tori Dixon. Here. Ruth Smith. Uh oh. Ruth She's here. here. She's muted. muted. Okay. That's okay. But She's she here. We're apparently see her. here. And I'm Myra Ross. I'm here. Marty Smith will not be with us today. And Elise um, Link, I believe, will be coming later. Have not heard that she won't. Um, so we have a pretty abbreviated agenda, which in a way is nice. Um, so Maureen, let's see, um, do we have any announcements? Does anybody have any announcements? I have a question, Maureen. Um, I wanted to share the aging and dementia, um, the, the meeting on the 25th of July. I want to share that at work. Do you have a flyer? Yeah, we're finalizing it right now. Uh, so the Asian Dementia Friendly Community Project, we're ho hosting a series of listening sessions. In uh, July 25th, we'll be having a listening session on transportation buildings and outdoor spaces. It will be from 2.30 to 4 via Zoom. And I can email you all the flyer um, so you can distribute it. Um, yes, I'll write. I'll make a note of that email. Okay email flyer to uh, DAAC members. Thank you. Yep. Uh, any other announcements? Uh, let's see here. So I believe Myra might've mentioned this at a previous meeting, but I just wanted to loop back. Um, the Mass Office on Disabilities will be hosting a disability summit on October 27th. Uh, this year's theme is on accessibility in a digital world. And I will email you uh, the link so you can um, hear more information about it and to register. Um, it will be, a, a, um, a, I guess, a hybrid meeting, if you will, where yes. you could drive to Boston if you wanted to, or you could attend via Zoom. <laughs> so um, I can send you that information. and. Um, I um, just wanted to share that with you so you're aware of that. And I, I don't have that many specifics about the sort of uh, um, schedule or who the speakers are, but I just wanted to inform you. It's only three hours um, and I think 10 to one or something. And the guest speaker, I got an announcement yesterday mm -hmm. is Lainey Feingold who is a blind attorney from California. And she has done a lot of work on um, sort of structured negotiation resolutions of, um, of conflict rather than, you know, what you try to do before you go to court. Um, and I think she should be a good speaker. Um, oh, wonderful. I don't know. I don't know you know, anything about what they have asked her to speak about, but I assume that's it because that's the book she wrote and that's the work she does. Um, and the meetings in Somerville, you know, you would think, okay, well, if you're gonna try to get the people from the state to come, you could try to make it a little more accessible, but okay, maybe not. <laughs> um, I guess that's where they have space, but Somerville, um, you would think that they could, at least try to do it near South Station where the buses and trains come in, if they're going to do it in the Boston area at all, right? But they didn't. Right. Somerville isn't even on the train that comes out of South Station. <laughs> oh. Anyway, um, so I attended some, very little actually, of the American Council of the Blind National convention last week because I had guests and I I have to go to New York and I'm, I just wasn't around. So one of the things that I did attend was about transportation. 
And it was about um, the kinds of accessible signals that there are. Um, and they were talking about various kinds um, of signals. They had a speaker, um, boy, I can't even remember who it was right what now. What was My the goodness. conference called? Oh, it was American Council of the Blind uh, National Conference. I mean, they do it every July. I just wasn't able to go to most of it. But the, um, the part about the um, transportation was two parts. One had to do with roads and one had to do with, well, I guess it was about signals and there were two parts, but they discussed these various things. And they talked about bike lanes and they talked about um, warnings, you know, like warning strips. And apparently there are some new, but not yet implemented uh, or not yet passed regulations that are gonna come about warnings. Like apparently bike lanes is a big problem. Remember how they wanted to put the bike lane in this on the sidewalk here instead? And we asked them to put it in the street. Well, right. um, bike lanes in the street are not necessarily the best thing because bicyclists get hit. That's probably not going to happen in this little piece that we've just dealt with here because it's a one way street um, and the bikes are on one side and um, putting them on a narrow sidewalk would be worse in that place. But what they have now is this new detectable uh, surface. It's trapezoids that stick up three quarters of an inch, but don't apparently interfere with wheelchairs. Um, and I don't know how they don't, but they don't. And they put these trapezoids as markers between bike lanes. They're like warning things. Like if you cross these trapezoids, you're going to be in danger. Um, this is not an area that you can go on unless you're a bike. And that is not an area that you can go on unless you're a pedestrian. And, you know, they, um, they have all these different detectable systems that they're devising. And, you know, the problem is nobody's gonna know what they are and nobody's gonna put them in for a long time, but it's really cool. There's a lot of people doing some good thinking about all of this and also about the detectable warnings. I mean, the, the uh, accessible signals, oh. the stoplights. Um, and the stoplights, um, we really need to know more about what Guilford is determining about the old lights because they need to be, they don't need to have antiquated parts put in to make an antiquated work, a light work in an antiquated way. If they're gonna be, fixed, they need to be fixed so that they work to as close to a current standard as they can. Because in the olden days, they didn't, you know, they, they didn't know as much as they know now when they put these things together. So I don't know, I mean, he, um, we need to get more information from him about the, the, the status of these lights all over town that Marty inventoried a year ago this week. Um, that we haven't heard a word about since. Um, and I'm just very interested in what he has found and what he is planning to do by way of repair, because I'm afraid it's very little. Uh, I Myra, know you I know, um, you know, well, just to get back to the trapezoid uh, delineator, I, I Googled that and it brought uh, me to, um, it looks like a vendor's you know, they, they make yeah. them. So yeah, I'm on their yeah, yeah. website. So it says delineators, the optimal solution for separating sidewalk level bicycle and pedestrian pathways in dense right. urban areas like universities and city centers. Um, let's see here. I'm just reading this quickly. So it looks like it's like a little bump out, uh, like a little bump um, that you would put at the sort of edge of the bike lane. So someone like separator. to separate, like separator. and then and yeah. then they have a photo of someone that's blind with a with a cane. what would you call it cane? cane, and so they would be. It looks like they're probably crossing 
crossing a, a, the street a, a, along a crosswalk or something, and then they they hit that little delineator and they know that that they that that's the that's the edge that they shouldn't cross that. Um, well, so, they know that they're they, that they need to look for bikes there, or for bikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when they're crossing yeah. it, you have to cross it if you're going to cross the street. Yep. But um, and it it's just seemed like an interesting thing, and I think this is something we really should work with Tracy's committee on because they're working on sidewalks. And I think we need to also work on sidewalks. Sidewalks are few and far between in decent condition in this town. And that's, I mean, downtown, you know, they're working on them, but all over town, they either don't exist or they are in terrible repair. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think we really need to start to think with Tracy's committee about what, what is the standard that we want the town to employ when they build sidewalks from now on? And what do we want them, you know, I mean, there's information out there and we'd like, it would be good to have them do it in the way that really is helpful to all kinds of people. The wheelchair users do not have trouble with these trapezoids because you're not supposed to go over them unless mm -hmm. you're crossing the street, right? Yeah, you're that's what it looks like. To, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to bring to your attention that it looks like uh, Tracy Zafian is in attendance. Would you oh, like oh, to okay, make her great. a panelist? Sure. Okay. Um, okay. I I was at a the previous age and dementia friendly community workshop or hearing. And there were some people, I think they're elderly, I mean, uh, senior citizens. <laughs> and um, they were having, they brought up concerns about uh, crossing signals and that it was very short and yep. some of them just not audible signals at all. And also crossing across the streets and they brought especially Amity Street area. And Maureen was in that meeting too. So you might recall something, uh, Maureen. And I said, we are looking at this uh, and we have brought this up to the attention of the town, the audible signals and how they are very important. So there is a big crowd of Amherst residents that suffer from this, they, they are not disabled, but you know, it's not safe. They don't feel safe crossing right. the streets or crossing the, uh, the um, Pleasant Street and things like that, for example. Yeah, right. yeah, but I'm so I glad Saren was in attendance of that meeting. So um, I'm not just tooting our horn that Saren can also say that we're, you know, we're, yeah, this board, this committee is is uh, been focused on making improvements um, yeah. to the uh, to the audible signals and it and yeah that it was definitely expressed from uh, folks that were in attendance of the listening session um, yeah. for the, the last a, uh, age friendly listening session. It wasn't even on transportation; it was about communication Housing. and technology. Yeah. But yeah, but that's something you know. It, yeah. um, I'm sure. Uh, the July listening session will be on transportation as well as um, like outdoor spaces in buildings. So I'm, I'm, I anticipate hearing similar comments. Well, if this is really good to know, one of the things they talked about, and it's what um, the woman, Allison Bull from the commission talked to uh, Maureen about is the length of time allotted for the crossing not just the audible signal, but how much time, you know, do you tell people there are, anyway, there are all kinds of signals. This is apparently something that we can work with the senior center or the council on aging or whoever it should be. And with the transportation uh, advisory committee, because it's all part of the same thing. And I think coalitions work better than uh, individual committees. So, I just thought that it might be something that we could really, and I'm glad to hear about what came up and I will be at the next um, meeting. I was not available for the last one, but I think it's important for all of us 
to make sure that you know what we do, we do together. And these people that have come up with all the state of the art stuff have considered it from the perspective of people who walk slowly, people who use wheelchairs, people who use scooters, people who are blind, and they've come up with things that work for everybody. They, you know, they, they over years have made mistakes in coming up with things that didn't work for everybody. But I think they've got it pretty much, you know, I think they have some really good um, prototypes of how you should build sidewalks, how you should build intersections, what um, traffic signals should look like, even signalizing roundabouts they talked about. And a lot of what we're going to, or the town is going to do in this roundabout is right. They would have preferred probably not the rapid, rapid flashing beacons because those are yellow. They're not red lights. So they're warnings, but they're not red lights. So like they're supposed to yield to you, but it's yellow light, right? It's not a red light. Uh, so, Tracy I mean, has raised her hand. Sure, she Tracy. Want to speak? Um, hi. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I tuned in a few minutes late. Uh, so I think you know. Of course, I'm a huge fan of building better and having better pedestrian infrastructure, and it serves a lot of people. You know, as has been seen with the age friendly communities initiative and the feedback from the hearings. One thing is that. I think a lot about both building new facilities and improving, like making improvements in areas that don't have them and also maintaining what we already have. And the, those are always coming from different pots of money, right? There's grants to build a new sidewalk or there's grants to build a new crosswalk or to make those improvements, but then to make sure that what we have, I mean, that's why I had brought it up last time about Amity, but to make sure that what we have is we continue to maintain it, it continues to be accessible and safe. And I've noticed that some with the, I've been working on stuff with Safe Routes to School with the school district and the member of the TAC and I, we had been to each of the elementary schools and, you know, walked the different corridors that kids get to school. And like, for example, I noticed along Route 9 on Belchertown Road <clears throat> that if you, well, one, I mean, so to me, it doesn't seem like the least accessible place, even though the traffic there is very fast, and which is a big concern, but because there is a sidewalk, it is separated from the road and so on. But like, for example, if a kid's were ever going to bike along that, I was just there recently and there's still like a lot of winter salt there and sand. And, you know, if you have cracks in the sidewalks or like other types of things. And, you know, we've talked to you about like how the vegetation can block sidewalks. And so there really needs to be a concerted effort related to maintenance too. And I think sometimes it's easy to build these new things and not always have the maintenance. Um, so, I mean, I hope that you do hear back from Guilford about the signals that are there that aren't working and so on. Because the maintenance piece is huge for the long-term, for long-term accessibility. Yeah. Tracy, this is to Tori. I, um, I've called about Route 9 before and the town has told me that it's... Um, it's the highway, so it's not the town's responsibility. Has that changed? So I think I there are different sections of Route okay. 9, and I'm not sure, maybe Maureen would know, but um, like on some of the state roads, right, on like 116, the town it's locally owned, like all the way from downtown to the notch. Okay. I believe that Route 9 is state owned all the way along. But I could think of town, I mean, so I just noticed like how covered in sand and stuff that the sidewalks still are even now, like months after the winter on yes. Delta Town Road. But you could also point out places like that are definitely Amherst streets where you have the same issue, right? So right. because you, the street sweeper for Amherst goes along and it sweeps all the Amherst streets, but like, is anybody making mm -hmm. sure that the sidewalks are cleaned up too, right? So um yeah, well, I'm not sure about that section of Route 9, but I can bring it up and see, find okay. out. Is um, that the section you were thinking about or other parts of Route 9? Well, I think that's an issue for the town council. I really right. wish Pat were here. There are just so many things that don't get done that are that are not repairing this and repairing that, but it's just simple maintenance. You know, it's just ridiculous. And I don't think talking about it in this venue is enough. Can, can you send a note, Tracy, since you're the one who saw it, 
can you can you send a note to the town council or bring it up in your committee or should this committee sign on to it i'm just really tired of the lack of very well you know very well you know what i'll you know what i'll do work. um myra is i'll put it in c click fix which that it's not my favorite way to report things but it does it will be a record that it was there and yeah. then i can see like the dpw's response and say well we're not responsible for you know maintenance right. of that road because it's a state i'm road, really interested but. to know if the if the sidewalks in northampton on route nine and hadley in route nine and belcher town in route nine are also full of sand so, well, and then of course, then we have the completely inaccessible section near my house, like where they're doing that construction between University Drive and South Pleasant, which is, I recommend nobody walk there for a very long time. <laughs> There's always yeah. stuff blocking the sidewalk and yeah, so. What road do so, you live on? Sorry, I I'm live on, to... I live on Blue Hills Road, but I'm just saying that um, construction project, the states, it's a state construction project to, from University Drive up to downtown. Hmm. with redoing route nine that project yeah. will not be finished until 2024 so wait isn't that about pipes isn't that why they're no, doing but they're re but they're also building um they're supposed to be putting in sidewalks on both sides of the street okay or pedestrian pass there's a few places where it's too tight to have like a full sidewalk i think there might actually be plans there might refer some mixed use paths with bikes and where the where the right away well, was that's a where we tight. Need, were and, you here for the announcement of the trapezoid that i heard about yeah no week? i heard that yeah i mean there is some really good tech out there about yeah i agree with you about state-of-the-art design and making better signals and things like putting that. bikes on in the street especially if it's kids riding to school on route nine is not a good idea but putting them on sidewalks that aren't demarcated for pedestrians and bikes is also not a good idea so there is apparently a state of the art of how to do it. Yeah, no. And, um, we ought to we ought to be looking into that. Um, and I don't know, I don't know whose job it is to really police how things get done because we know that collaboration is not something we're going to get out of the DPW. In other towns, they do, but right now we are not going to get collaboration out of the DPW. We say what we want to say so, uh, and so they I, do what I, they want to do. Talking of DPW, um, two days ago, I saw a new roundabout, which was formed on the road on Snell Street, not on the intersection of Snell to Route 9 and University Drive. And it's where the new building is being built. And I don't remember having it mentioned at all no. in any of Wait, our previous it? meetings. It's at University Drive South, um, okay. and it was part of Barry Roberts' project. He yeah. took down that little house, and he's building the multi-story building at the corner mm -hmm. of University Drive. Well, yeah. it's University Drive South, that section right before Snell and Route 9. Yeah. And it has offices on the lower floors. It has apartments for students on the upper floors. Um, so that item too, I remember that going to the council. So I remember the council reviewing- We never heard about it. University I Drive South, including because they're putting like parking meters there. But I, a lot of that project, it seems like Barry Roberts, they had just decided themselves to put yeah, the roundabout the, there. The it was never road. something like really considered before any of the councils. Before any I, mean, I have no idea. And I said, I don't remember looking into any one of these. I mean, that design at all. It, it and, didn't come to TAC either, Saren. Yeah, I remember and, asking uh, at the time. Yeah, Barry Roberts is a very uh, powerful uh, owner of property and business person in Amherst. Good for him. But anything like that, just because it is uh, abutting his property should not be just put there without getting any consult. So the town is not following the rules that we were, I mean, that was expected. His designs, yeah. they went to the council. The council are the keepers of the public way. The council reviewed the plans, including the parking plan and the little roundabout. And he's also the one who put in like the street, he separated the lanes and he put in the little area with the trees. I think Barry Roberts put in all that on University Drive South. 
Um, so the council reviewed it all. And as the keepers of the public way, the council did not refer it to other committees to examine outside of the council. Okay. So. I will say that was well, a few years ago. That was uh, when that was approved. That was actually, that got approved days before COVID, before the, the lockdown. And, um, you know, I, I think since then, you know, Tracy is right. The town council is the keeper of the public right away. And at the time, they decided that it didn't need to be referred to any other committees. And so they approved it. You know, we've seen progress with the town council to, to, um, to refer um, these sorts of public right away improvements to a variety of committees, such as the TAC and, and this committee, the DAAC. So, um, so hopefully as, you know, time, continues that you know we're currently seeing the town council uh have these sorts of projects be referred and we hope that that continue that is a continuing tre uh, trend and right. and so since then then pat d'angelis the town council member ta pat d'angelis is now uh, a staff liaison to this committee for the town council so having folks like her having eyes on these projects is really helpful to remind uh, folks that, hey, there's other committees that need to review this. So unfortunately, sorry that that, that particular project didn't go through well, this know, committee have, for review. I have no idea how they address the pedestrian crossing across the street at all. There's no sidewalks there. Yeah, but I mean, uh, what about the people? Well, there's the bike, there's the path on the east side of the street. So it's like the connector path to the Norwich Rock Trail. So it goes from the right. So it goes from the University Drive Route Nine intersection, and that's the path. Like it goes past the um, the vet, right, and then it go it winds up like to the Norwich Rock Trail at the bridge. And then currently there's no um, sidewalks or anything on the other side of the street, on the west side of the street. So, and that little roundabout is just right at the, it's that part of University Drive South that used to just end. Like it looked like one day it was gonna be a through route. And I think that might still be part, I thought that that was in Barry Roberts plans to connect to like a parking lot. So here I'm pulling up my screen. This was what was approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals back in 2020. This is the site plan and it includes the roundabout. Um, so to orientate everyone, um, this is University Drive South. Down here is Route 9. And then here is, uh, it turns into Snell Street here. And so that's where uh, the, uh, the developer um, was agreeable to make some public public right away improvements as part of the approved permit. And so there is this uh, roundabout here um, at the sort of at where it turns into Snell Street and where they have the entrance to get into the the, the development uh, for the uh, mixed use building. And it looks like there's a little like, um, what would you call this a medium at the entrance? And um, now, Maureen, to the to the whatever to the if you look right, like to upper right from the roundabout, like is that designed to be parking? Is that yes. parking lots there? So that yeah. I mean, none of that's currently there right now. It like currently ends. Yeah. Yep. So but, this is the proposal. Um, um, you know, the final product will include um, parking spaces back here. Um, and then, so the car, a car could turn in here, park over here, and then exit over here. Um, I do believe that they added crosswalks. It's not reflected in this sheet. It, it might be in a different sheet. Um, but um, I've never seen anything with crosswalks there. But um, I but am. The people, I mean, uh, if there is going to be a residential area in the new development, wouldn't these people sometimes? want to get on the other side of Snell Street and then walk. 
Well, so you know, they would, uptown, they would, for example. They would go to the other side of the, so they'll be at the University Drive Route 9 intersection and from there they can access like the existing sidewalks. And then there is a sidewalk that would be placed on the, the along University Drive in front of this uh, the mixed use building. So they're, they are gonna provide on-street parking along University Drive. Yeah, and it's designed to be metered. That's what, what the- Yeah, and so this, this proposed sidewalk will then connect you to the existing um, crosswalk here that has, you know, a uh, traffic light um, and a and, um, controlled pedestrian signal to cross the street. And so you could cross over to get to the other side of Route 9. What are they doing about bike lanes there? They did not propose any bike lanes. Um, so, you know, someone that is riding their bike from this building, they would cross this street to get over to the other side of University Drive and connect to the existing off-road bike, you know, multi-use path. I'm just thinking, I mean, it seems like everyone has their own jurisdiction. Um, this guy goes to that one. The town council doesn't refer that. The state does this. And we are left with a hodgepodge of yeah, exactly. things that don't make any sense. Um, and we don't even work together. So I think Tracy suggested it months ago that we really put together, you know, some kind of coalition between them and us so that we can come up with we agree that this is what we would like you to do every time you do X in this town. And we don't need to police every single one down to, you know, what color stripes you're gonna put in because we're going to tell you in a master plan that this is what we should, this is what you should do. And if you wanna deviate from it, then you should come to us, right? I mean, it seems to me like we can't be policemen every single second for every single project, especially when we have a GPW who is not interested in working with us. And I, I think, I don't know what, what anybody else thinks, but I think getting this together and frankly with the Council on Aging as well, um, or the Senior Center or whatever the entity that they have there that we could work with is that we should put together a group of people who, who is gonna talk about pedestrian safety in Amherst. Mm -hmm. Pedestrian and and, and bicycle safety because everybody cares about driving. But you know, it's the, the rest of it is the afterthought. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you're yelling about bikes. Yeah, somebody got killed. Oh, we better do something. That's not the way to do it. Yeah. So I I think I don't know how to create that kind of coalition. Um, I mean, Tracy, you seem interested in working that out. And I don't know, is there a counseling on aging? Is that the right? person that's the equivalent of us? I don't know. Well, and I do think, I do think that the pedestrian, the, the ideas about walking should definitely be part of the whole age friendly. Well, community. I mean, this mm -hmm. age and so, dementia friendly yeah. Yeah. Uh, group is, should be aware of this too. They right. should participate. So we have to have some kind of an idea about what we want so we can have them buy into something. We just, you know, just to have them say, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Or, oh, yeah, we should do that. We are the ones who should do it. So yep. we have to figure out how to do it and who's going to do it. And, you know, is it going to be a priority for this town? Because they are building a lot of roads and stuff like that. And just a little aside, hey, the Massachusetts came up with this major league tax re recut package because the state has so much money. They have $3 billion in reserves, so they decided to give some of it back to the people. Why do they give some of it to the streets? Yes. You know, I mean, nobody, you know, all you need is one axle that goes bad, one tire that needs, you know, that, that the tires go bad because they are unevenly worn because of the way, or the potholes or something, you'll pay much more than you're gonna get back in taxes. Just fix the damn streets. And mm -hmm. make sidewalks. Don't give us the money back. Yep. I don't know. I'm very, I'm very frustrated because there isn't any reason for this, except everybody has their own little fiefdom. And and we have to figure it out. I think we as this committee, as the TAC, as 
the de age and dementia the, as the Council on Aging. Maureen, you're connected with almost all of it. Chris is connected with the tax, right? But yes. is this something for the town people to talk about, the, the staff, or is this something for us to talk about as joint meetings of committees to see what we can work out? Or see if we can put up a task force combining some people from each of these committees to work on it. Do you think we should go to the council, one of them ask to be at some time to be heard, and then we can have some representative from both committees and go and bring our points and how we'd like to have set some standards in the regulations, you know, and- I don't know how to do it. Is that might be a way to do it. What do you think, Maureen? You know how to play. I don't know. I'm not going to uh, Well, so it seems like, you know, I'm listening to all your comments and it seems like, firstly, is there a town policy for um, improvements for the public right of way for private, for uh, if it's being proposed by a private entity or being proposed by the town itself? What is the what is the policy and procedures? Is is there is there something in place? There might be, um, and if so, could it would be helpful to review that? Um, and so, um, and if there isn't one, with the town council, the keepers of the public right of way, entertain the the idea of creating policies and procedures that lay out. A uniformed um, step, you oh. know, step by step of, um, you know, of when they have a proposal going in front of them, they'll refer to their policies and procedures and follow them. And so we don't have to reinvent the wheel for each town council member being, you know, elected. Um, that we can use that as a tan as a, um, we can use that for years to come and, and adjust it as needed. But um, I think those are two really good questions to start with is is there a policy and procedures in place that the town council use if so could we get a copy and review it if not can the town council create that because we don't want we don't want uh you know we have these uh committees such as the TAC and the DAC and the council on aging and perhaps other committees that we might not be thinking of that have uh, interests um, in weighing in on these sorts of projects. And so we wanna ensure that these groups have the opportunity to review and provide comments for the town council's consideration as they're you know, approving these sorts of projects. So you... I'll, I'll just mention, so I do go to the TSO meetings regularly. The TSO has developed two different policies related to public way requests. They have one specifically about parking and they have a more general one that they need to reconcile both of those, but they have been using those at least for the parking decisions. Okay, so they need one on And they do include, safety. and it does include um, referrals to relevant committees. So there was actually, what I attended the last TSO meeting and they are looking at changing parking on Lincoln, you know, near the university. And they actually referred that item both to TAC and to Disability Access Advisory So you're saying committee. that the, the TSO, oh. which is a subcommittee of the town of council, the council has, right. has a policy and procedure. They, they do have two policies. So they, we need to but they get need them to, to do a pedestrian them. safety one too. I um, mean, that's really what it's about. It's about pedestrian safety. Right. Having yeah. to do with demarcations, stoplights, the how yeah. slowly people might walk. And yeah. because everything is set up for drivers. And, well, and, and it could also include things related to snow, right? And yeah. each also <laughs> signal, like signal crossings. I mean, some of these and issues, as I mentioned. not being removed from the sidewalk by the middle of July. As I yeah, mentioned. Things like that. Last, I mean, these issues have been going on decades, right? <laughs> so, yes. But, yes, the, yes. I, but I think one thing, like, doesn't, does the Disability Access Advisory Committee, like, aren't you asked to weigh in sometimes in terms of, like, the budget and expenses? And so. No, no. no. Well, like, for example, like for new for new sidewalks, right? Some towns are using ARPA money for new sidewalks no. and improvement of sidewalk we infrastructure. And I thought that, that Amherst may be doing that too. No. But there is that piece with the maintenance is like to make sure that there's money in the budget with maintenance related to the 
infrastructure such as sidewalks and the crosswalks and things that aren't always, or I'm sorry, the signals to make sure that there's maintenance money for those too. Once upon a time, we requested that the town collects for parking violations that should be returned back to DAC and we could have access to those funds and use them for ADA related services. But, and I know Joe Tringali, who was a member, he was very much pushing for this. And he was pushing for the DAC to be a commission, which would have more power, but just, it just no, never. Well, and I thought too that some of the parking money went into the, and then parking is an enterprise fund. That means it's supposed to like pay for itself. And they actually used ARPA money to balance the fund when the parking okay. revenues went down so much. Um, All right. So let's let Tori to... speak. She raised, yeah, has raised her hand. Yeah, please. So what are you saying that the parking funds are being used for, Tracy? Is I mean, I, we, we maybe you should have a parking person, <laughs> like the head of parking company, <laughs> okay. to speak to. Yeah, because um, that would be interested, interesting to know. Because, um, I mean, as a re enterprise fund, parking is supposed to pay for itself. So, right. So, just like sewer and water, it's supposed to pay for itself. Now, one of the challenges with the parking fund is that the downtown parking permits. I mean, this is one reason they want to increase the parking fees for downtown mm -hmm. because. The annual permit has been $25 a year. And so that doesn't even barely cover salaries, let alone any improvements that you need to make to parking structures. Did they raise it? They have raised it for next year. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Which is $25 probably ridiculous. But even Why? but if, even so, like if you wanted to build, if you want to resurface a parking lot or any of those things, it doesn't cover the money for that. No, it should okay. be five times that. Yeah. It's, you know, we're giving people essentially free parking. Which is probably why the town wasn't very receptive to this committee having the parking, uh, the ADA, um, you know, if somebody violated the ADA parking, they would get a ticket and the money would come to the committee or, so, you know, something like that. So that might be why they weren't uh, too amenable because the parking is so low, um, but, but I don't know. So, um, but back, I wanted to mention the roads, Tracy, you had mentioned that they, um, they are um, the road sweepers go through every road. Um, we haven't had a street street a street sweeper down my street in ages, and oh, really? it really it really needs I, to be. I done. thought that they go through. And what road are you live on, Tori? I'm on Log Town Road. You still have sand in your street from the winter. We have sand. We have we have asphalt. So we don't have, they, I mean, there's like a schedule of that the DPW releases every spring yeah, and they, they say April. that they're going, you know, section of street to section of street. And I thought that they covered, it's a pretty long list, like comprehensively of all the streets. I thought they covered every street, every street well, that's owned by the town. Maybe so, I, I don't know. Maybe they did come through, but they need to come through again. <laughs> I don't know what's <laughs> happening, but. Oh. The, we've got debris all over uh, different sections of our street. It's like the asphalt is falling apart because we have asphalt on, uh, there's curbs and the curbs are falling apart. So. Um, so Tori, do you ever use that like C click fix? Cause you can re always report it there. Yeah, I know I need to do that. I just, oh, okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> I just haven't done that. I have oh. that app. <laughs> I just need to do that. Okay, so maybe to be continued to see if we can come up with a plan about how we can, well, Maureen made a suggestion. So should the DAAC write a letter to the town asking, I think maybe, well, what do you think? 
Um, anyone want to make a motion about a asking the town for any policies that have to do with, uh, well, what were you saying actually? You said private. Yeah, so the town council is the keeper of the public right away. So what's what's their policy? Uh, what's their, how do they go about reviewing any sort of proposed public right away project, be it a town project or okay. in the case of you drive south, it was a private developer. So how do they, what's the policy and what are the procedures that the town council utilize? I mean, do they just like make it up each time or do they have sort of a checklist? How do they go about, what is the criteria that uh -huh. they use and do they have it specified in their policy? that gets into if and when they want to refer it to other committees. I can um, for share, as I said, the TSO has these two different policies, like one specifically with parking and one with public way requests more generally. I can share, when I find those documents, I can share those links, so. That would be good, I guess. We need to know one thing that they do have, and then we need to find figure out but if there's- I know the parking what's one- What's missing from it? The parking one has been used um, by the TSO for a number of parking requests, like on-street parking requests, and including Lincoln and other places. And both okay. the TSO and the then right the council, away? they what looked at the those policies. Um, and I know too, I mean, on the parking side, like I always bring up, when I go to those meetings and when we provide feedback, we always bring up questions about pedestrian safety. Um, like one issue on Lincoln right now. And so I'm surprised because of the TSO meeting, they did say they wanted um, the Disability Access Advisory Committee feedback on this, the proposed changes on parking. Did you Lincoln. hear about that, Maureen? No. Um, uh -huh. So I know sometimes the chair doesn't always refer things as quickly. Um, but one thing that's been happening in that neighborhood is that um, there's a section of Lincoln doesn't allow parking close to the university and the section farther away from Lincoln, like south of McClellan, they do. But a lot of UMass people use it to park because it's free parking there as opposed to parking at UMass. And the vehicles will park like very close together and they'll park very close to driveways. And so there are issues with sight lines for people entering and exiting the driveways and also for pedestrian and bike safety. And so I've always brought up the issues I have, the concerns I have about sight lines with that. So the, the a proposal from um, a res, uh, council member, Jennifer Taub, who lives on Lincoln, was to not allow parking during the day on the section of Lincoln that currently allows it to address that issue since so much of the traffic is UMass related. My daughter lives in Somerville. Every so. resident gets one. You get a pass for your own vehicles and you get a visitor pass. And the visitor puts the car on the street, you go in the house, you take the pass and put it in your car. And if you don't have a pass in your window, even if you're a visitor, you can get a ticket. And why can't we do that here? Those people live there. They're entitled to park on the street if they need to, if, as long as it's not a weather emergency or something. And they can have a visitor pass for whoever visits them. And everyone else gets a ticket. Right. Cambridge does Why, that also. Yeah. I mean, in Somerville, I, we have to run in the house, get the visitor pass from my daughter to every time we park on the street, which is every time we go there. So I don't know. Why can't Amherst figure that out? Anyway, um, so I guess the step one might be that if Tracy can send us those materials that show us what the current policy is, at least um, for the pedestrian, for the town, um, town ways, I'm sort of interested because if what we need to know is already in there, that's great. Then it's just an enforcement problem. And if what we need to know isn't already in there, then we have something to work on to make a request, right? Does that sound like the way to do this? I'm not sure. I think well, it sounds like a way to proceed. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the, and the council has a general um, policy on, they've updated it. Like if you look on the town council page, 
Um, okay. You can see current council policies. They do have a general thing about public ways, okay. just about which okay. stuff is under the town manager, which um, items the council has delegated to the town manager, such as, for example, like if you're going to close a street temporarily or um, like some of the temporary okay. requests. But that's not the stuff we want to talk about. No, I know, you but need, just yeah. but just to start with yeah. the framework about the, yeah. the council as the keepers of the public way, certain things have already been delegated to the- Okay, yeah. so I guess we have to read that. Maybe we should all look at it for the next meeting and see if we have any ideas about what it covers that we know is an enforcement problem and what it doesn't cover so that it needs to cover it. Because we have two issues. Sometimes there are lots of regulations and no one's enforcing them. And sometimes the regulations or the policies aren't there. So I guess that's what we need to figure out as a first step. Right. So maybe for the next meeting, which is September, so we all have plenty of time to do it, we can look at those policies and I would appreciate it if at some point, Maureen, you could even send us links to them rather than having us dig around in the website, which I never um, find to yeah, be. Yeah, sure. I'm going to send honest, you, I'm gonna I, send you what I, I have. Uh, if I may, um, instead of me digging around um, for this in, and, you know, God forbid, um, maybe the website's out outdated, et cetera, et cetera, things change. Um, I think I'm going to email the chair of, of the TSO um, uh -huh. okay. the question and say, hey, if you guys have current policies okay, or perfect. current information, please okay, send great. it to us um, just so we can put it on them and, and, and that um, they can reply they might just be like here's the link and there you go or um there could be I, i'd be curious to see what what their response will be yeah would, and any I, any rules and regulations or policies that pertain specifically specifically that were designed specifically with pedestrian safety in mind not as an afterthought after the traffic after the cars after the parking that's what i'm interested in like where does pedestrian safety fit into the town priorities so you know maureen one question or one suggestion i have is that you cc the council president thank you Sorry. what did you say ruth no um myra no, tracy ruth my suggestion something. i heard ruth say oh something. go ahead no 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 i didn't say anything no <laughs> oh, yeah, I, did. I just said ditto I, I'm oh, there's my... Elise. You said ditto. Yeah. I knew it was somebody. Okay. Ditto. I'm sorry. I should have identified. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. So Elise is here. I don't know when she came, but um, that's I great. was late. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fine. Um, just when you come in late, sometimes it's good to say I'm here because then it can, then everybody will notice it for the, I mean, everybody okay. does notice it. Maybe it got me. Um, okay. Anyway. Um, so Maureen, you're going to write to the TSO. That's great. I mean, this wasn't even an agenda item, but it came from announcements. And I think it's timely with what Saren reported about the Asian um, and dementia friendly people because of what they wanna talk about. And maybe we should all try to make sure we're at the transportation one, which is the next one. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. So we have an agenda and I don't even know, let's see. You want to tell me what's on the agenda more? Oh, sure. Okay, so here. moving on. Um, well, let's see here. Old business. So the Mass Mass Office on Disability, the ADA Improvement Grant Project for the front door and walkway at the Bank Center um, should be um, nearly complete, if not completed. I haven't walked over there this week. Um, so we can check that off our list. Yeah. Um, it was to fix the um, broken automatic door opener yep. that's been broken for a while. And then there were some slight slope issues for the um, like the, the sidewalk right outside of that door. Yep. And then I believe the Amity Street sidewalk improvement project has been completed. I have no update for the Pomeroy Village intersection project. And oh, yeah. So yesterday... Um, I received a nice email from a planner from Northampton. His name is oh, Keith yeah. Bennett, Benno, Benoit, Benoit, something like that. Uh, he sent me a quick email 
that said that they just um, had their IT department um, uh, install a new assess uh, accessibility widget tool on their website. And um, it has features for people who have vision impairment, among other um, disabilities. Users yeah, may change. Yeah, something about dyslexia. I don't know. Yeah, how dyslexia that does that. Right. Yeah, I'm not really it sure. Reads it, it to you. It yeah, I don't know. Yes. Users it, may change. Does it have an audible part, Ruth? Is that what you mean by it does? I, I don't I don't know. I didn't listen to it. I you know, I just saw the photograph of it and it was it looked impressive. I would assume that the I might be wrong in assuming this, but I would assume that they have an audio for people who are dyslexic. Yeah, so, so I'm on the website. Let me uh, let me click out of it. So this is the north the city of northamptonma.gov. If you go to their top right corner of the screen, there's a accessibility icon you click on that it's it's like green or i see i look green to me keith said it looked yellow to him but you would click on that and then it takes you to this widget and there's a screen reader um i guess you can uh, contrast the colors Ooh. on the website smart contrast don't know what that really means yeah i'm uh, really interested in elise looking at this because I she can tell at, us, I mean, she can tell us if it actually works. I have to <laughs> go into it and look further. I mean, right now, looking at the screen right now, it looks good, but I'd have to, I'd have to really look at it more. You can make the, the, the text smaller or larger. So I'm, I'm kind of just goofing around doing that Holy as I talk moly. to you. You can space out the text more if you want and then and then make the fonts look bigger uh, you can and there's all, it looks like you can do all kinds of things um you can make them oh it looks like you can make the cursor a lot bigger oh i like that yeah <laughs> um, i like too that yeah looks it looks good. like uh, uh, screen uh, reader yeah contract. whoopsies i don't know what that's doing yeah i haven't tried the that's... screen reader thing um but it looks it like dyslexia reader. friendly i don't know what that does but that's great it looks like it changed well, uh i don't know what that does that um you just clicked on something that gave a line um uh, maureen yeah i saw that i don't know what i did though that would uh, that would help someone stay on their line when they're reading right. oh right. i love it yeah uh i to be honest unfortunately i don't know what i clicked on to make that right. happen no that's okay <laughs> but it was a green line and yeah um that would help someone stay on there on the lines as they're reading oh and yeah the, here you go oh, well so let me find some there you uh, go but i don't know yeah, yeah. but yeah. if you know oh, it's called have reading speakers. mask yeah so there's yeah. a button called reading mask so it could help you focus focus on what you're reading you know, There's hey, I, that would be helpful oh, that's for me sometimes. Great, so. actually. Yeah. A lot of we, people have trouble with that. There is one thing that I, one criticism I have. The yellow highlights are great, but I wish that they had the highlight, but then they had like, like where it says reading mask in yellow. Mm -hmm. That's hard to read. The text, you mean? Well, yeah, you can make the, the color. Oh. It's very, yeah. Um, I contrast? wish that would stay black but have that yellow icon on top, mm. but have the text be black. Cause I can't, I can, I can barely make out reading mask. Gotcha. It's yellow on white. You know I mean? It's yellow. It's like that greenish neon yellow on white. Yeah. It's a little bit tough. Yeah. yeah so that's not, it, that, that doesn't conform to what the ADA would say you have to do. But that's why I wanted to know, you know, it's it's a cool yeah. thing and it sounds like it's cool as far as it goes, but I wondered if it is, um, I wondered who who made it and I wonder who who agreed that it was good rather than I'm, just the designer. Um, well, I'm sure this meets regulations, yeah. but, you know, it's regulations impressive. are regulations. It's not a human being. Well, so, yellow, and white, yeah. yellow and white doesn't. But um, but yeah, I'm, so I I've, think it's great if they can I maybe should put in a note Elise and ask them to um, okay make some adjustment. But yeah. that's really so. Can we 
I think it would be, do people think it would be an improvement on our website? Does it, does it no, enhance one, the way the website looks? 100%. I mean, uh -huh. so Amber should, should have, I raised my hand, but I'm going to speak. 100% Amber should have that on their uh, town website. So do you want to make a motion that the um, town adopt or purchase or whatever they have the to widget. do? Yes, I will make a motion that the town adopt or the widget for their town website. Um, and I've seen it on other sites, so I'm I'm sure they uh -huh. are saying that it it's up to eighty eight standards. But if you, at least if the yellow or greenish yellow doesn't work for you, you should say something. But I wonder. If yeah. you change the color contrast on, you might have to play around oh. with the screen because yeah. if you change the color contrast, that might it work. might change the contrast on that that yellow green. I, I don't know that. though. I think you'd have to play with the website okay. for a while and and see if it does that. So Tori made a motion. Does someone want to second it? I'll second it, Elise. Okay. I never so, thought of that. Changing the contract, yeah, I'll play with they it. They probably see. offer opportunity to do it, so that's pretty cool. Do we um, want to do a roll right, call? So we have or... a motion. Yep. Yeah, we have a motion to ask the town to uh, get or use or install. What word do we use? To purchase and purchase. install and to maintain. Is yes. Good. Purchase, install, and maintain. <laughs> and keep updated or yeah, that, yeah. Um, what what is the thing called? It's called a widget. The widget. Accessibility wi widget. Accessibility, accessibility widget, widget. Yeah. for their website. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know if we need discussion. We ready to vote? I'm ready. Okay, Ruth. Yes. Tori. Yes. Saren. Yes. Elise. Yes. And me. Re yes. Okay. Right. So we have a motion that came out of this. That's great. That's great that he sent that to you. Thank you for presenting it. Yes. Yeah. So we have two action steps out of this little meeting. Okay. Yeah, and I sent him an email thanking him for sending it and that I would forward along to our IT department and to, the dis to th this committee to help nudge the conversation along, so. Okay. So we have to let Pat know about it let her know that we, um, that we, I guess she just needs an email that said we have two action steps and I can send that. Sure, um, yeah, and I'll because, type this up uh, with uh, the email from Northampton and pass it along to- Lynn. Lynn and Paul Bockelman, I guess, yeah. and whoever else uh, in yeah. our IT director. Yeah. That's cool. Um, all right, what, um, do we have any, we don't really have anything else. Oh, do we have any updates about the North Amherst Library? I do not, but to, uh, Tracy don't. has raised her hand. Oh, okay. Oh, I mean, I just had a few other items. I mean, I had wanted to comment on Amity. Um, just that I had mentioned at the last, Disability Access Advisory Committee meeting just about some of the the hedges that are like been growing up like on Amity on the lower parts of it, especially between uh, I guess it's between like Lincoln and Dana. So both sides of the street are actually the hedges are infringing on the that's the property right of way right? and um, <laughs> so there was the one property owner I think I told you that I had actually I had brought up the issue I know that that's the route that Elise takes to Dana um, and it was pretty bad it was like covering up to three quarters of the My sidewalk and I actually lent the person time. an electric hedge trimmer but they barely trimmed it they it's said, scary. oh, there's nothing we could do. It was like the tiniest little trimming, but then I noticed that he was trimming it back more there. Um, and and the other on the other side, the property, their neighbors and friends with Dorothy Pam and Dorothy Pam said she would follow up with them too. But just in terms of, I mean, again, this is some of this is like a maintenance issue and it's like snow about, removal. I mean, they're, you know, it's in the public way. Like with the first property owner who, 
I know, it, I mean, I know his family and, you know, his kid goes to school with my kid and things, but he just says there's nothing I can do, but it's like, it's in the sidewalk, you know, you got to trim it back. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's got to be sort of aggressive and do something because it's not acceptable. And so, well, this is part of the pedestrian safety thing. This is Absolutely. the same thing as the enforcement of the snow removal policy. Yeah. And, um, and also mm -hmm. since the last meeting, I had also like followed up with Walk Boston. I had brought up the issues just about how sections of Amity are steep. Right. And so at the TAC meeting, Guilford Mooring said, well, the slope is too, is not ADA compatible, you know, it doesn't comply with the ADA. So there's nothing I can do to fix the sidewalks there. Um, hmm. So I'll let you know if I hear more from Walk Boston on that. Uh, I mean, just because you have a sidewalk on a hill doesn't mean you should do nothing ever. <laughs> so <laughs> pretty clear, right? Um, but that's sort of what Guilford had told us. Um, and I, I have a totally different, I mean, so that was about Amity, but I had a totally different issue is that, um, Somebody, a council member had mentioned to me that the council is currently looking at like the, the streetlights policy and that um, in terms of, you know, back in 1991, they turned off a number of streetlights to save money. Right. And it seems like that could be coming again, possibly. Um, but I was actually looking at the way the streetlights policy is written in Amherst it seems like it's from 2001 and it's not very like pedestrian friendly in my mind. And, um, yeah. and I was it's looking not. actually at the streetlights policies in other towns and some of them really do focus on pedestrians. So I know just even, even on Amity, I was walking on Amity last night and there's some sections that are very dark. Um, though Amity overall is lit pretty well. So I don't know if that would something, I, that's of interest to me as a transportation advisory committee um it might be of interest of you too that's why you know i come to the meetings i'll just say in general if assuming that this is the current policy it says that the street lights according to the policy street lights in amherst will generally pr be provided as follows at intersections at dead ends and end of cul-de-sacs for road conditions that are potentially hazardous such as when you have severe curves or hills on downtown streets, mainly the downtown central business district, but we know from experience that some of those streets are not very well lit too. And it says also in other streets with heavy pedestrian traffic, such as in the vicinity of schools or other commercial areas. But it also says that street lights will not be provided by the town um, for pedestrians in residential neighborhoods unless one of at least one of the above criteria is met or the select board, again, this is an old policy, otherwise deems a situation to require a street light because such lighting could be requested virtually everywhere in town. So, I mean, I think as you know, as we have like, if we're trying to encourage, right, we have the climate action plan and we're trying to be an age-friendly community. I personally support having more street lights than fewer. So I agree. And, and one of my neighbors, so she started paying for the streetlight when they turned them off in 1991. She's been paying for the streetlight outside her house for 30 years. <laughs> and she's ready to stop paying for that. So, so it's actually, that's one reason it's coming before the council because she said, you know, 30 years, I'm gonna turn it off. And the, count, the town said, okay, so. So Tracy, I have another question and I think this is, so, on, I, I live on Logtown and I believe that section of Route 9 is um, is part of the state. It's not town, but even though I'm in town, <laughs> I'm in Amherst. But we have bus stops that are on the opposite side of the street and students um, will, we have lots of students that live on our street college students and um they cross the street and they cross the street at night and there's no crosswalks there's not even a striped cross just a white simple you know crosswalk anywhere by the um bus stops mm -hmm. um it's so dangerous is there to, a street light there I don't think so. I mean, no. it sounds like, wow. yeah, I'm not familiar with that stop. I mean, I am hesitant to, like, if you are going to have a crosswalk, it has to be 
um, done in a way that cars will actually stop there. Like it does need to have some traffic calming measures or some signage and or, you know, rapid rectangular flashing beacons or other things that will actually make people stop because I'd be really hesitant to stripe Man. crosswalks okay. unless you actually change the other conditions. Okay. Um, and um, I mean, and I did, I was meeting with the town manager last week about TAC and, you know, I did bring up a few places where I would love to see better, um, you know, lighting or uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacons or other things to make crosswalks safer, including near Wildwood at Pleasant Street and Strong Street. And, and also I know um, like Lincoln and Amity, people also talk about there is that's a place where there's some car accidents and Lincoln is very, I mean, Link, Amity is very wide at that point and there's the hill, like it's hard, I mean, and sometimes the cars are going really fast. And um, I mean, I think that's so a question back. can you send back, him a note and but, amend by adding Tori's concern to the list you gave him? But, but what the Tom manager said to me is I think, you know, there are questions about at what level, like should people be weighing in on individual locations of crosswalk improvements or like at what level should it be the staff or you know at what level should it be counselors it, and so i mean there's still questions with how it's done with the council about i mean to me it seems appropriate for a council to uh, a committee advisory committee or a council committee say or a counselor to say i have concerns about a specific intersection please fix this but then I mean, there could be some that say, well, some of these decisions should be handled primarily by staff, like using the criteria that have been established or whatever, so. I mean, they have other options. They can um, wait. It goes down to Old Belchertown Road and comes back around and it will come on uh, the side of the street that is um, right where the entrance to our road is. Sure. But you know, students, they're impatient well, and they want to get off. Well, sooner. I know like for some of the school buses, right? Like if you look along 116, like north of Crocker, mm -hmm. like coming up the hill into Amherst Center, that the school buses won't let students off the school bus until it's like on that side of the road, you know, just because right. they're concerned about the safety of it. Even if parents say I can wait there on the, you know, or whatever. I mean, so... Exactly. And I mean, there are other streets too that people have talked about having more crosswalks too. Um, but it needs to be done like in a, you know, way that makes sense and following like right. some consistent policy. I mean, I think to Myra's point about having some overall pedestrian safety, maybe having a, even a pedestrian safety plan or guidance in general right. about like exactly. these are things that are priorities for us. So, I mean, I hope that you know, that's, I hope that we can make progress on that as a town, so. I hope so too. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Oh, we were going to invite, um, my mind has left me. The DEI director. Pamela, yeah, what's her name? Can't think Pamela of it. something, too I, young. I, yeah, so I will send an email out to Paul Balkerman making this request uh, and see. Um, I haven't I haven't met Pamela yet. Um, she, maybe she doesn't work physically in the town hall. Maybe that's why I haven't met her yet. But I'll send uh, an invite via Paul Balkerman to attend, cool. uh, you know, the September meeting or, or, you know, sometime yeah. in the fall, whenever is sort of convenient and makes sense on their end. Well, why don't we do it in October? And in September, we should put together a list of things we want to touch base with her mm, about. I like that idea. Um, so we could ask her to come for our October meeting. So our September meeting can really be about the questions that we would have for her follow up with uh, on the pedestrian signals that we never got any information about um, and uh, finding out what we can do about coalition building for pedestrian safety, right? We can figure those things out. All right, I feel, I feel really good about the possibility of working with other groups. Um, 
on, on the pedestrian safety thing. And it's, it's not even only pedestrians. If there's a better way to do bicycle, you know, stuff other than having them in the street so that they can get hit, then we should do that, right? I mean, if they're gonna build a new sidewalk someplace, put those trapezoids in the middle of the sidewalk and then keep the bike people safe too. Um, so, I mean, I think there are lots of things we can do. I just think that the, it's sort of haphazard the way it's done now. And we don't have enough, there's not enough of us and you know we don't have enough of a plan so that everything is done in a collaborative way. And if it were, we would be a lot further ahead. Okay. So I think that's what we should do. Right. Okay. And that's it that we have listed on okay. the agenda. I do not have meeting minutes. Um, and anybody um, want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. This is Tori. Sorry. Yep. This is Elise. I'll second. Okay. All right. Uh, Ruth. Yes. Vote. Yes. Vote to adjourn. I think she may have stepped away for a oh, minute. Okay. Um, yeah. Tori, she's already adjourned. She's already adjourned. Sarah. She's Sarah. muted, but I heard her say, I saw you her saw say her yes. Face. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Elise. Yes. Uh, Tori? Yes. Okay. And I'll say yes too. And anytime you have an idea, just email it to me. I'm back from my three weeks of um, my son's wedding and I went to chamber music camp and my brother was here and now Ooh. I'm all by myself and it's, it's good. It's definitely good. Okay. Okay.